Now welcome back guys. There are a lot more of you than there was last time we recorded, which is freaking awesome. Um, hope we continue to get more subscribers. But today we're going to talk about some creepy shit that happens around Michigan. Jolene and I are both from Michigan. I still live here. She moved to Tennessee. But Michigan is kind of a, a different state. I mean, we have almost a little bit of everything. There's wilderness, there's big cities, and there's beautiful beaches. And something that comes with our beautiful beaches is some pretty creepy stories. Um, we've done a few shorts on the Michigan Triangle. There's tons of unexplained things that happen there from lights that just appear. There was something that they believed to be a meteorite, but they never found the meteorite that caused the big streak across Lake Michigan. Uh, Jolene, do you know any creepy little things about Lake Michigan? Or any of the Great Lakes for that? Well, your, I know your family was from the Lake Huron side of Michigan. I don't remember ever actually hearing anything creepy about it. <clears throat> about it. Do you remember that creepy little town that we used to pass through every time we went to your aunt's to go to the beach? Mm, which one? It was like, it looked like an old western type building that looked like it was falling in. I want to say it looked like an old gas station or maybe a store, but it was like the only thing there. And it was like at the halfway point between, um, when you got outside of the town going towards your, your aunt's house. It's been a long time, so I don't really remember. That little house or creepy little gas station or store, whatever it was, that actually sparked my interest in starting to research creepy things that are near the Great Lakes. The first thing I ever heard about was the man that disappeared on a ski trip. Uh, Mr. Ballin uh, has a, where he goes into great detail and is a way better storyteller than I am. But the guy went going on a ski trip and went walking out towards Lake Michigan. And the only thing they found was footprints and some ski poles. And then a few days later, after the search crew went through, they found a backpack where they'd already searched that was his. And then fast forward 15 months later, he's knocking on his mom and dad's door. No clue, like no time had passed. No, yeah, that's weird. And he said he woke up in, I want to say Pittsburgh or a place in Pennsylvania, which is 700 miles away from where his parents oh my went god to... that sounds familiar mr ballin did uh he he did a, he did this story where oh he, true he goes i and... guess it probably if mr ballin did it i probably watched you probably it watched it and well, probably our our subscribers have too but that was the first weird story i ever heard associated with the great lakes and then i started you know everybody in that lives in michigan knows about the edmund fitzgerald about that sinking of a ship. It's probably the most well-known shipwreck that <clears throat> happened, in, happened in Michigan. But I started looking at other things, like finding out that there's been, that's a, like almost a in-between number of 15 to 1800 shipwrecks that have happened on Lake Michigan alone. Jeez. That's horrifying. <laughs> But think about how Michigan weather is. I mean, you've lived here, you know that we can have all four seasons and then repeat them all within a day, within right. a 24-hour span. It can go from 90 to there's an ice storm to 30 by the end of the day. And imagine that over the water. Oh yeah, I bet that can probably get pretty wicked out there. And guys, if you've never been to Michigan and don't know what the Great Lakes look like, whatever you are picturing in your head of what a lake looks like, forget it. 
because you can't see the other side of the Great Lakes. When you're out them out in the water, you there's no there's no land. It you, feels you, like you're on the ocean. Right, you forget you're on a lake. I was told that the Great Lakes were mislabeled. They're not lakes at all, they're inland seas, which makes it when you think of it in that perspective, it makes makes way more sense. But the first Great Lake I ever seen was Lake Erie. Because every Michigan kid goes to Cedar Point in the summer. And you know, the beach that is on or Cedar Point's on is Lake Erie. Oh, is it? <laughs> I didn't yeah, that's know. a that's a very calm lake. I mean, when you're like up on the Ferris wheel looking out over the lake, it's a very calm lake. It's like you don't see any waves. And my husband's family is from the Lake Huron side of Michigan. <clears throat> that lake is still relatively calm. And my husband grew up where Lake Huron was literally in his backyard for most of his life. So the Great Lakes were never you know, at least Lake Huron wasn't a big deal for him. <clears throat> but the first time we took our son to Lake Michigan, the first time he seen that lake, he said, holy shit. <laughs> because, I mean, there was white caps that day. That there, there was the flags on the beach telling people, it's not a good idea to go in there. And later that day, when we were there, there was a teenage kid that drowned that day. Um, that's how rough that water is. Yeah, so, when I was younger, my sister and her husband took me um, to Lake Michigan, and I remember, I remember the waves, because I was like, oh my god, because <laughs> this lake, you know, they were like really, really big, And because we goal, were playing in them. My goal with my son is that he gets to visit all of the Michigan-touching Great Lakes. So, of course, the easiest one for us to do was Lake Huron. And we, you know, he got to go swimming in it when he was just a little baby. And then we took him a short time later. He was only like maybe 10 or 11 months old to Lake Michigan. And my son is very much a water baby, he loves to be in the water. And I walked him up to the, sh you know, where his, the waves were hitting his toes. And I said, you want to go in? And he looked at me and goes, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> like, that is just, no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> and every time I've ever been to Lake Michigan, the water is rough. It's not, a, it's not a lake that you're like, yeah, let's go swimming. Yeah, I, I think I've been there more than once. I think both times was pretty much the same. Really you wavy, like and there was a lot of dead fish. It was so yeah. wavy, it was like bringing in yeah. fish from everywhere, and, oh. It, so that doesn't surprise me that so many ships have went down in Lake Michigan, just now. Right. You know, it's just the weather, that's how choppy that water is. It almost seems insane that people are like, yeah, let's get in a boat, let's go out on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, there's huge freighters that travel the Great Lakes just like in the ocean because it is a, a waterway for shipping but the, just the the sheer power that that lake could capsize one of those the plane crash that happened around Lake Michigan sorry about that guys I was opening my pop oh my god um, I was wondering what that was, I, was thinking, <laughs> Did I just hear that again am I hearing shit what is going on with these weird noises but Sorry. the shipwreck that happened over Lake Michigan, that they didn't really find much. They knew there was an airplane there, but they didn't really find much, but just a little bit of wreckage. And uh, Another cool thing about Michigan is the legends, that is, there's a lot of Native American influence in Michigan. That It's almost like there was an active... Oh, a conscious decision to keep a lot of Native American culture in Michigan. A lot of our city's names remain the same. There's a couple I guess people could find creepy, like the Singing Sands of Bay Degree. In the Keweenaw Peninsula, which is on the upper peninsula of Michigan, there's a little part that looks like if you held your right hand 
in front of you with your thumb placed down and stuck your pinky up a little bit. That would be the pinky would be the Kiwana Peninsula. Um, there's a little beach that runs alongside uh, that little peninsula. It's only one little strip of white sand. <clears throat> and there's a legend that a Native American woman lost her love in um, Lake Superior. And she was so grief stricken that she just walked the beach singing and calling to her love until she died. Well, when you go to Beta Greece and you run your hand through the sand, you can hear singing coming from the sand. The legend is that it's her still singing for her love. Scientists say that it's a particular anomaly that all of the sand is all rounded and there is a perfect moisture level for this to happen to create a vibration in the sand that we hear is singing. But they can't completely explain why it happens all the time. Because the moisture level in the sand will change as the tide comes in. Hmm. But I find that beautiful that that you can really go there and hear that. And supposedly yeah, it is. If, if you take the sand away and like take it home and try to do it, it won't do it. But if it's there on that particular beach, you can make the sand sing just by running your hands huh. over it. Either way, I mean, it's pretty cool, I think. I don't find it creepy, like I said. I, th I think that's beautiful, but I guess some people could find that it's creepy that the ground singing at you and you touch right. it. Right. Well, if you didn't know about it, I mean, <laughs> that might creep you out. You're like, whoa, what's that? I've always wanted to go to the Keweenaw Peninsula anyway, just because I'm fascinated with by Lake Superior. <clears throat> but um, now that I know that's there, I really want to go because I want to touch the sand to make it sing. That would be cool. That and not to be like, you know, a pure Michigan commercial for tourism here. But <laughs> if you ever want to see what this country probably looked like before the white people came in, it's in the UP. Like, it, you, there's literally where it's, you, it looks like the glacier just passed by and just cut out the rock. Like, breathtaking is not even a, a word that accurately describes the Upper Peninsula. Yeah, it'd be nice to see that. Also, the dog man, which we've already covered in depth in a whole nother which is a video. hella creepy story. So go check that one out. Um, yeah, I'm curious about the dog man too. Like I go camping it. There's supposed to be like an every ten year thing. Like every ten years is when you see when there's sightings of them. So I'd like to find when that ten year interval is and go camping in the woods up there, just to find out. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm just not thinking of that I've heard from um, growing up, like, you know, stories like that around there. Well, the I can't Paulding think light. of any. The Paulding Light is another, that's a Michigan story that nobody has an explanation for. And there was actually a show that went to try to debunk it, and they couldn't. There was no explanation why this light just appears. Right, that one I've heard of. That's in the Upper Peninsula, too. Oh, yeah, it is. They, I think they've done, like, a couple shows have had that on it. The show i seen, like, took every explanation for the light and tried to recreate it. So one explanation is that it's cars driving down a nearby highway mm -hmm. and they try to to mimic that even like with brights and like going different ways they couldn't recreate that light 
And while they were trying to recreate it, the light happened. So they went running down the railroad tracks, or down the, like, lane or whatever it is. And tried to, like, go towards the light. And they could never get to the spot that they thought the light was coming to, or from. <laughs> so I think that is just a, a phenomenon. It may be, like, a gas... You know, like gas igniting in the air or something like that. Cause they always have some explanations for them, though. So, I mean, <laughs> doesn't matter what it is, they're always going to give us some explanation. Well, the legend is that it's a lantern from the railroad brakeman who was killed along the tracks that once ran through the valley. And I've also heard that sometimes at certain times of year, it sounds like when you hear or you see the light, it sounds like there's a train coming. So and that would be trippy. I've always wanted to go see that too, see the Paulding light. Really creepy legend that isn't a Native American legend or anything. It's actually kind of like a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, but there's the Ada Witch. So apparently, in the 19th century, a woman was being unfaithful on her husband. And one night, her husband pretended to be sleeping and waited for her to sneak out to go be with her lover and followed her. And when he found her, he caught her like in the end and killed her. And then, and so after he killed her, went after the, her lover. And the two men fought until they both died from, you know, beating each other up. But people claim that they can hear, like, a, a loop of the fight taking place and a woman screaming for help. And there's been sightings of a woman in white um, in a cemetery in Ada, as well as walking down certain streets. Uh, that's not that far from me. I kind of like to go check that one out. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. Because that would be cool if you could actually catch that loop. I like to go drive down those roads. Of course, not by myself. And yeah, just why to not? see. <laughs> oh, fuck all that noise. <laughs> There's a place out by where I grew up. Um, there's a cemetery out there that's supposed to be an old Native American cemetery and there's like no gravestones or nothing, no fence, there's nothing like signifying that's what it is. But supposedly, if you go through there, like, you don't come back out. And people, like, when I was a kid, like, if you were walking down there, like, you would see them, like, go on the other side of the road. And we're talking, like, you know, where I grew up. It wasn't a town. It was way the fuck out of BFE. <laughs> so if you're walking down the road anyway, it's an ordeal. But to, you know, go the long way around just so you're not... And it's just like a little patch of land. My mom showed me where it is. But, you know, for the don't go there um, effect. But I never had the balls to do that one either. Supposedly you get hatchets thrown at you. Hatchets? That would be one reason, good reason, to stay the fuck out. <laughs> what I think is what's really going on there is out there is really swampy land. And there's a certain, like, kind of, if you're a Michigander, you call it muck. That's kind of <laughs> works like quicksand where it's really hard to get out of if you get in it. That's what I'm betting that piece of land is, and like this story was just created to keep your sorry ass off of it, so they're not having to call wrecker services to pull your dead body out of this nasty <laughs> shit. <clears throat> because you can't get out of it. Like it's right. Quick scene. The more you fight it, the more you're gonna get sucked down. Um, but yeah, I'm betting that's probably what's really going on there. It's like a patch of that crap that they just don't want kids playing in, so they invented this uh, stories. But, like I said, I don't have the balls enough to go find out. Because even if it is just, you know, Michigan muck, but 
Uh, I don't know that shit either. There's a reason there's a story to keep you away from it. <laughs> right. But in some aspects, I'm like, ooh, poke the bear. But in others, I'm like, no, nah, no, we'll just let that story lie. But I will tell you, driving past it, you get the feeling you're not alone in your car. Ooh, that's creepy. Like, every time I drive past that, that just that spot, that I, you don't feel alone. And people that uh, I know that are sensitive tell me that we're not alone in the car. You know, that can see spirits and things like that. They're like, oh, we're not alone. Drive faster. And after you get past it, you're alone again. So I hate that feeling of feeling like you're not alone when you're in the car and you're supposed to be alone. <laughs> I don't like that. I used to get that all the time. So guys, hope you enjoyed our little creepy tour through our home state. What are some creepy things about your home state that you want us to look up? If you like this episode, give it a like, share, and a follow. And until next time, bye. Bye.